Hi, I'm Jill Gostin, the IEEE Region 3 Director. I hope you find these volunteer resources useful and informative. This is one of several modules which provide training and informational resources for individuals serving in volunteer roles at the IEEE Region, Section, and Chapter level. In 2020, our annual Region 3 conference had to be canceled due to COVID-19. Because of that, we quickly decided to go virtual. We held WebEx meetings to provide the training and information that was to be given to volunteers at the conference, and we recorded those sessions. These recorded modules created the foundation for our IEEE Region 3 Volunteers YouTube channel. The value of these recorded modules has become very evident, so we will continue to build on what is offered here. If you have suggestions for additional content, please leave a request in the comments below. Uh, and um, explore new ways to reach our members. And so this, this talk is, is directed to that. I, I noticed in some advertisement it was called uh, the Region 3 Mentor Program, and we don't at, at present have such a program in Region 3 on a formal basis, but I think uh, we've got had some of this going for quite some time. Um, informally. So um, I hope that this will lead the section leaders to uh, think about uh, activities to do in their sections and perhaps mentoring will be uh, the one that um, uh, you select. I guess I would also notice note that the uh, young professional program in region three is also starting up a mentoring program and has has uh, started trying to trial that. Their intent had been to uh, to launch at Southeast Con, and of course things uh, didn't go quite as planned. So uh, we can take questions on that uh, or other things later in the evening, but uh, let's sort of get into this. So um, uh, just a couple of housekeeping rules. Um, keep an open mind to this. Uh, check any baggage at the door we have about 30 minutes and uh, bill's going to probably bring the hammer down on us at that point uh we're going to try to monitor the uh, uh, question and answer window for questions uh and and the chat area as well uh please mute your microphones and turn off your cameras that'll help the bandwidth uh, for other people to um, uh, uh, participate and and uh, receive this information as well so our agenda tonight will be to sort of start with some background on mentoring and some thoughts of how it applies in, in the IEEE space. Uh, and, and then what is the value to both members and to the IEEE? And then we'll follow that up with some, some ideas uh, to get you started on thinking about what a, what a possible mentoring event might be. So hopefully uh, that'll meet our mission tonight. And um, what, what I'd like to do now is to try to uh, uh, start off with a little poll. So you hopefully have uh, the ability to see your chat window in uh, uh, WebEx as soon as I get back to my copy of it. Oh, it's moved because I'm presenter. attendees okay so what i've dropped in the chat window right now is a link to a poll that looks like what is on the uh, right hand side of the screen and it essentially asks just two questions number one is, do you have a mentor and um, try to fit your answer into one of the three choices we thought of yes now uh, yes in the past or uh, no never and then also are you a mentor to someone now, in the past, or again, no, never? And I'll also follow my rules and, and uh, stop my video as well. <laughs> uh, so if you would, uh, go go now and um, fill out the poll. So Dave, where is that link? It is in the chat window, I hope. Chat. I sent it to all attendees. Is there a URL there? I don't see it in mine, Dave. I don't see it either. Oh my goodness. I see it, but it doesn't work. Um, you can, it takes you to a site, but you can't actually choose anything. I saw it and I, I did it. I, I, I did it. 
Yeah, it, it works here. It's working for me on another browser. Um, so I guess if you can fill it in, great. If you can't, I apologize. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll learn from this what works and what doesn't. And I guess if you want to, you can put your answers in the chat window if you'd like to instead. And we'll look, we've got 22 responses. So a number of people have made it in. And so um, uh, from our audience, this is uh, where we stand. Feel free to continue to enter your uh, results here. But uh, I see about a quarter of us have a mentor, a quarter of us never did, and about half of us have in the past. So about 75% have had a, a, a mentor either now or in the past. So that's great, lots of experience here. And then in the bottom picture that you see, um, you um, you can see who is and is not a mentor and, and it looks like nearly uh, half of us are a mentor, uh, another 16% in the past and 37% haven't, haven't uh, done that yet. So uh, that's a good basis to um, uh, understand as we go through this material and uh, interact with it. So thank you. And uh, at this point, I believe it's time to turn it over to my uh, uh, my one of my past mentors or present mentors, uh, Bill Radcliffe. Bill. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Um, actually, um, the the role shifts between mentor and mentee between the two of us, and we really never know who is doing what. So. Uh, maybe we can discover some of that as we go through the presentation. Um, this looks like a lot like the last slide. The person is looking out in the future, and instead of taking an assessment of where they are, um, this is more of what have we packed for our journey. And so I wanted to uh, just give you kind of a checklist uh, to go through uh, to see uh, um, that you that your baggage has made it and um, that you're um, that you're on your way. Oh, by the way, um, you're you're you were supposed to check your baggage at the door, but um, that may not always uh, occur. So um, hopefully, throughout this um, on this this presentation and discussion, we'll begin to answer many of these questions. Next slide, Dave. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the, getting rid of the old baggage oftentimes is difficult to do because we don't really even care, carry uh, or notice what we're carrying around with us. We just take it for granted. And so here are some myths that, that I wanted to dispel, and I will in a second, but one, member is all, all, one mentor is all you need, one size fits all. Um, about half of us have have mentors and, and have had multiple mentors, and that really is not true. Um, you, need to, uh, you need to keep in mind what, what subject area you're dealing with or what issue you're dealing with. Um, so one mentor may not be, and probably not, uh, the only one that you need. Uh, the mentor is always older than the mentee. Um, that isn't the case either. Um, I've had both. Um, and I've been both young and old and so forth, and uh, that just doesn't hold true. It's really a relationship between a person who has knowledge and experience uh, guiding a person who needs knowledge or experience. Um, and, and so the, the age really is not, not a major factor. Um, so don't always go looking for a mentor that's older than, than you. Um, information, uh, advice, and knowledge always flows from mentor to mentee. Um, that assumes that the, that the mentor-mentee relationship is always with the same person. And in my uh, experience, that oftentimes is, is I learn more from the, from the mentee than the, than the mentee learns from me in that. Um, once a mentor, always a mentor? No, not necessarily. The, the relationship holds for a certain set of circumstances. When those circumstances are gone, 
the um, the the relationship is is no longer needed. Uh, so you don't you're not locked into to being a mentor for somebody forever. To be a mentor, you need to have gray hair gray in your hair or your beard, as the case may be, and that isn't true. So um, these are the the kinds of baggage that we want to get rid of, or at least not take with us on the trip. Next slide. Uh, the truth, these are things that you probably do want to keep on the, in your backpack. Uh, the mentoring is a type of engagement. Um, it's not the only type of engagement that um, Jill was mentioning, but it is is one of them, and it should be treated as an engagement. And we'll, we'll a little bit later, we'll go through a, a brief model of what engagement looks like and, and what are the characteristics of the of the mentoring part of this. And some of this you already know, so kind of put up with me as we go through it. I'm trying to monitor the uh, the question and answers uh, uh, section, but it doesn't seem to be working on my, my screen at the moment. Um, so maybe Dave can uh, interrupt if we get uh, questions that we need answering at this particular point in time. Um, the I will. Okay. The mentoring relationships are multi-directional, and we talked a bit about that last time, the, the roles can shift. Uh, the process of mentoring can be learned and must be understood by all through negotiations. And, and part of the reason for this introduction is to kind of set a level playing field for, for what mentoring is and, and, and the processes, but, but the real, the real part of mentoring uh, that 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 works the, the, is the doing of it. Not and, um, anybody can learn the processes, um, but this is human to human interaction, and um, and that establishes a, a cultural relationship as well. So the doing of mentoring will become part of the culture, or can should become part of the culture. Um, and the culture will also reinforce more mentoring. Next slide. Okay, this is the a rough, uh, very rough uh, process uh, kind of flow. Um, the the encountering people uh, can take very many can take many forms. Um, uh, but it's more than simply a casual um, howdy, how is today, how are you doing, kind of thing, or or small talk in a in a in a group setting. Um, th those are part of the things to break the ice. But but encountering people um, really is getting down to to beginning to establish a dialogue, um, a two way conversation, and between encountering people and 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 the dialogue, we're determining the mutual areas of interest, the expertise, the need and willingness to share both ways. So you're you're really assess each each person, the the potential mentor and the potential mentee, are really determining: uh, Do we have a fit here? Can can we? Can we um, communicate with one another? Do we have mutual interests? Is the expertise that we're looking for as a mentee present in the mentor, um, and so forth? So uh, once that 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 loop that uh, recursion is is uh, it takes place, um, we begin to form a relationship, um, and I'm. I'm quite sure that 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 some of this can be handled remotely, you know, electronically, but but the beginnings of it, from my experience, requires um, face to face or something very very close to it. Uh, it's um, it's amazing how human beings can um, can do a great many things. Um, Asynchronously or even synchronously, and even with video and audio capabilities that we currently have, uh, but there's something in the the exchange of 
of facial expressions and and so forth that that really help us understand in a kind of chemistry about the other person and that and that generally occurs face to face so in forming relationships we're really trying to form a bond and some place in here uh, when the relationships are initially uh, beginning to be formed that we understand potentially a scope that 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 we um, have an understanding of of when we're finished um, actually the beginnings of a, of a project plan so if you're interested in project management come back in a couple weeks specifically on the 25th of June and you can get some insight from Jim Conrad of how to do project management. But but the beginnings of the project called mentoring are formed, are, are created in this forming of relationships. Um, and that's why the, the, the pairing activity becomes the mentoring activity in that process once the scope and the trust is developed within that relationship. Um, uh, uh, maybe another uh, example or or um, uh, type of of encounter might set the stage for you. Encounter is kind of like the first date, um, and the and the the relation forming the relationships occurs in in many such dialogues. So. Uh, from the encounter to forming relationships can occur fairly quickly, or it just may take time. But but you'll kind of know when when you've got the scope identified, and you know what you and you know what the roles are, and, and be prepared to uh, move forward. Um, then there's the action of doing something: collaboration, cooperation, shared responsibility. Um, in this case, the actual mentoring. Uh, experience asking questions um, trading uh, insight as to how well did the did the guidance or the the, the um, um, uh, action from the mentor actually work or, or what needs to be changed or I didn't understand that from the mentee so so the action of actually doing the mentoring takes place and you'll notice the, that these loops are not um, simply flow straight through and 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 you're finished. Um, uh, there are times where you may need to go back and reform the relationship because there is a misunderstanding. Um, so these are re recursive or um, um, in that in that sense. And there and when you're finished, you may go all the way back to to the encountering mode again. So uh, one of the things in knowing when we have arrived is kind of what your your children may may uh, present to you every time you get in the car and you start the engine and I haven't even pulled out of the driveway yet and someone says are we there yet um, this is kind of knowing when we are there uh, so that the the mentoring relationship does have an end and we need to recognize when we reach that end um, do we have any were there any questions showing up, Dave, on the on this slide? Uh, no real questions that are on this exact topic. There's several people giving uh, interesting uh, uh, history items. I'll quote one of them here and uh, uh, just sort of talk about the relationship piece. Uh, somebody said, uh, have to be careful as a mentor. My last mentor told me you cannot excel at your career and excel in your family life. I effectively fired him as a mentor. <laughs> yes, and the mentors need to be careful that that they're not they're not living somebody's life for them, and they're not to take people where they can't go. So <laughs> it kind of goes both ways. Uh, the mentor needs to keep a rein on on uh, on how they present and what they present, and and as the the, the person said, knowing. Uh, um of what is um what is needed by the men mentee and 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 trying to keep a positive attitude about the whole thing good good observation um 
Why don't we go to the next slide and and if necessary, we can come back to this one. That we're period. at um, seven minutes to bingo. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go too much into this um, because, uh, but it it reinforces for me that there are relationships like affinity relationships, birds of a feather. You may sound like that may sound like they're they're kind of the same thing, but they're 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 really distinct. Affinity uh, is kind of like um, when you see. Um, uh, when you have a discussion about communications in Region 3, uh, you you often see Bill Ratcliffe, uh, Dave Green, and Charles Lord, probably at a minimum, uh, involved in that. That means that we have an affinity for that kind of thing and, and will pop up whenever it occurs. Uh, birds of a feather are more like transient interests that, that, that can occur and go, come and go. Um, so, uh, common social, political, and technical problems are another form of of uh, uh, that needs engagement and 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 really is reinforced by this whole culture of working together and exchanging and collaborating. Next slide. Um, I'm not going to go through these, but I would suggest that that these are critical. Factors that that will and should be present in in the success of an engagement. Um, if if uh, I, I, we don't have time to go into these in detail, but if you take them, if you take a copy of this when the slides come out and put it up on your refrigerator or wherever else, or your whiteboard, wherever else that you can call attention to it, these are are. Um, are, are factors that, that you may want to keep and should keep an eye on, in my opinion. Next slide. A quick checklist. These are the things kind of we've talked about uh, briefly, uh, but these are some things uh, that you can begin to think of as a section and taking um, uh, a, a look at yourself uh, as a section. Um, the sections health, the sections need, um, and and this may drive you to, um, uh, you know, calling for more help as a mentor or, or 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 any one of these particular items in which mentoring can can be effective. I think that's it for you. And back to me. And back to you. Thank you very much, Bill. Um, so, what can you do in your section? Well, there, there's lots of opportunities, and I certainly don't want to um, uh, impinge on your creativity, but I believe uh, that perhaps holding workshops on the mentoring process, either uh, the basics or uh, uh, a bit more advanced, would be useful. Uh, you could organize some participation in a YP mentoring activity and pair up uh, uh, either uh, life members or other people. Uh, Somebody's, if you could mute. Um, I think there's some, some value in that. Uh, perhaps you develop a mentoring program to support the new section leaders so that uh, uh, you've got a, a way to have a, a, a productive uh, approach in dealing with officer succession and officer training uh, as it goes. You've got a lot of people in your section uh, chapter, uh, the, the uh, Forums had a few people making comments about uh, their the mentoring that they formally participated in, and I, I know the people that have post, been posting. Uh, it is uh, also a uh, they, they've they've informally done mentoring as well. Our uh, Southeast Con activity often will allow a lot of time for you to meet up with uh, other people and share advice. Uh, Consider uh, the next time, or actually, as you see, the same people showing up at these meetings, uh, making setting up a relationship. But think about what you could do for your section to help. Uh, our IEEE tool called Collaboratech has a mentoring program uh, that we don't have time to describe. But if you were to uh, go in and read the uh, information, uh, they have a process for matching up mentors and mentees 
and then a process for sort of moving that relationship on uh, over time. So another approach that you can consider. Uh, let, we're going to we're going to end with uh, thinking about next actions and another poll. And so um, what what I would like you to do now is uh, go back to your chat window and pick up the other URL uh, and uh, tell us what you think about uh, if you see a formalization of mentoring experience for your section. Is that useful? Uh, and then if, as the events you're thinking about for your section. Are any of these uh, interesting? And you can you can pick more than one in the bottom group. And if you pick other, uh, please uh, uh, use the text box it below and uh, put some information in it. So uh, please fill that out. Uh, we'll we'll see what everybody's thinking. Thank you, Dave, and thank you, Bill. Um, I'm. I was gonna I was gonna let it be shown as a summary here, Bill, if you could hold just another minute or two. So if we look at uh, the second poll, we've got 12 responses so far. I'll wait just another minute. Uh, All right, in the interest of time, we'll do that. So, uh, well, the good good news is uh, there's there's a fair bit of interest in this. I'm, I'm I'm glad to see that. I think I think most of you came in knowing this was a useful thing to do, and you can see what your peers are thinking in terms of which things they might work on as a, a meeting event. Let me scroll the screen here. Uh, all right. So um, with that, Bill, uh, we can either take questions or if we're out of time, uh, we can take those uh, offline by email in our, uh, let me go back to the slide deck real quick. Uh, Bill is w.radcliffe at IEEE.org and I'm d.green at IEEE.org. Thank you, Dave. We'll leave that up for just a moment. I don't see any uh, questions that anyone has uh, typed into the Q&A box. And I'm not noticing any in the chats. Um, I think we're good. I think we're good. So thank you both. And I'm going to turn things over then now to um, uh, Charlene, who is going to lead the conversation on uh, senior member elevation. So Charlene, I've unmuted you. Or actually, we're we're both unmuting you. So go ahead. You should be unmuted now. Good evening. Hello. And you wanted me to share uh, the slides, right? Yes, share it. I'm logged in. You can share it from my computer. Well, you sent, speak. The, you sent me the slides. Yes, I did. Okay. Oh, I need to make myself the presenter. Or if you want to share my screen, I could project. So, if you have a screen, which one would you want to share? Uh, the one from the computer, not the tablet. Okay, let's see. Is that the right one? Uh, Or in the interest of time, you can go ahead and share. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do that then. So yes. Is everyone it. hearing me clearly? Yes. Yeah, I can only yes. speak for myself. Great, great. Can everyone see the cover slide? Yes. Great. Okay. Uh, okay. Good day. Go ahead, Charlie. Okay. Okay. So, good evening, everyone. My name is Charlene, and um, I'll be presenting on the senior membership just to take you through the process, how the requirements, how to prepare uh, your application, and the next slide. You can go to the next slide, uh, Bill, with our agenda. Okay. 
Thank you. So we're, we're sharing with you our Region 3. Thank you all for joining. Some of you might be wondering why you're a senior member and you were invited. But we will take you through. You will be part of our team where you, you may be a nominator for someone to be, to be eligible or you may serve as a reference. So that's the reason why and our section chairs are here uh, who will be the ones who are nominating our members. So this evening, I'll take you quickly through. I'll have Mary, Mary Ellen Randall as our section support mentor. She will also present, help, be part of our presentation to guide you through on how to prepare your application. And Charles Lord at the end will take us through the live nomination. So I'm hoping that you have your membership, your membership, uh, the, your nominee's membership number as we go through, when we go through the live nomination for, your, for you to nominate your your preferred person from your your eligible person from your section your section so we have a tight schedule so and i'll give you just an overview of the senior membership program for the region three so uh, next slide yeah i'm having trouble getting the right slides to you all right can you oh, see that i can see okay it's okay, just monitor because I have another system that I'm monitoring this late. I'm, I'm flipping okay. from, I'll present from, so it's okay. So for 2019, we had, uh, or we, we plan for the 2020 senior membership goal, we plan to increase our 2019 uh, senior membership elevation rate to by 2%. And so for 2020, for 2020 senior membership elevation goal, we have 250 persons to be elevated to the rank of senior member. And today's goal, we would like to nominate at least five members from each section, or if you're on the call and you'll be self-nominated, you're welcome to also be part of the, the workshop. Next slide, please. And so for our, our senior membership elevation, we IEEE has changed the, the, the format, so they have made it easy for persons to nominate their members from their section, eligible members. And so in 2019, IEEE has launched a online application where the process is very easy. All the applications are done online, the references are done online, and everything is done online. So the process is easier, the reviews are also done. We also have virtual reviews that we do online. And so for eligibility for senior membership elevation, uh, usually we say it, the, the requirements is to, for the applicant to be an engineer, scientist, educator, technical executive, or an originator. And it's usually should be in the one of the IEEE designated fields, which is usually the engineering, the computer science and information technology, the physical science, biology, biological and medical science, and mathematics, technical communication, education, math management, law, and policy. And usually we ask that the applicants be of professional maturity, that is having 10 years of professional experience. And also we, we sh they should, applicants should ensure that five years of those 10 years of professional experience should, should, uh, should, should include some significant performance that they have done within their professional experience. And so we go through now the next slide. Next slide, Bill. Next slide. Is it coming through? It's coming through. That's the one. So okay. you may be wondering what's the benefit of becoming a senior member? There are a number of benefits. There are benefits to the individual and there are also benefits to a section. And some of the benefits that are that are the the, the that are for the individual is that they, they receive recognition. You receive recognition for your for your within your peers, for your technical work and your profi professional excellence. You also um uh, as leadership eligibility where in IEEE, some positions, some roles that you volunteer in, one of the requirements is to become a senior member, is to be of senior member elevation grade. And so that's one of what, what another benefit to the individual. You also have the ability to serve as a reference, as, as that's also a benefit that you serve as a reference for other members of, 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 of the region or 
other members to be elevated to the rank of senior membership. So you, you'll be able to serve as reference to support other person's uh, application. As, an, as a senior member also, you, bene you, you earn the benefits of serving on review panels. And so we have a panel coming up and you, you might be a senior member, you can volunteer to serve on the senior membership panel where you will assess other applicants application. Another benefit that to the individual is the letter you 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 may receive you can receive a letter of commendation based upon your request and that letter can be sent to your employer. There's also announcement that you that is made within your section or your society or your local newspaper. And there's also a complimentary society voucher that you you may use to join a new IEEE society. That that's also a benefit that to the once you become a senior member. There's also the beautiful plaque that you will receive from IEEE when, you, when your application is approved. You can display your plaque among your peers in your workplace just to show your achievement as a senior member within the IEEE. Next slide, please. And so some of the benefits now to, for the section. Uh, as a senior member, once you become a senior member within a section, your section or society receive bonus. So there's an extra dollar on each year of seniors once you maintain your senior membership within your section. There is also, if, if a section has nominated five members and all are elevated to the rank of senior membership, the section do receive a, it will receive a $10 for each applicant once their nomination is 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 approved and that is why we're trying to push for the section this evening to nominate a minimum of five, an at least five members to be elevated to the rank of senior membership because the section will also benefit and usually these 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 benefits are paid out when the the, the yearly the annual rebate is done and usually is in the previous year right and so the requirements as i said before i reiterate that is 10 years of professional experience and usually it's your education plus your work experience. And five of those 10 years should be of significant performance. And the five years of significant experience, it need, needs not to be consecutive years. Usually you need two references. Uh, if you are nominated by someone, you only need two references and the ref your references should be of senior membership grade or a fellow's grade and you need references to support your application. And so just to let you know that for your application, for if you are nominated by someone, you need two references, only two references, because the person who nominates you will act as a reference. So it, it, you only need two other references. Or if you are self-nominated, if you nominate yourself, then you will need three references. And usually we, we ask that if some persons may need help with finding references within your section and you are on, if you are unable to, to, you are unable to find references, you send an email, you could send an email to senior-member at IEEE.org and they will match your resume and with someone and attach, and attach uh, your application to um, an individual to serve as a reference for you. So in this, this moment where if you're on this call and you're interested in serving as reference, we are putting together a pool, a pool of persons who will serve as reference for the, for the region three. And so if you're interested, you could always send me a mail. Uh, my mail is at the, at the end of the, of the presentation, which I think will be shared with all the invitees. So, this is basically all the end of the overview of the senior membership. And just to let you know, for the 2020, we have the goal of 250, and we have already gone through the 71 persons that have been elevated for Region 3. And we for there's a there's a senior member elevation panel review for June 13th and also June 20th. And we have pending reviews for that session. 39, 39 members to be elevated. So we're hope, hopefully we can, from this nomination this evening, 
this time we will meet that this these nominations will meet August 4th. <laughs> August 4th, uh, time, at this time, I'll now ask Mary will take us through how, how to prepare for the senior membership um, application. Mary? Next slide, Bill. I think Mary Ellen, oh, Mary Ellen, you might be muted. Hang on a second, folks, if you will. Mark, if you're on, if you can see Mary Ellen in the list, I'm scrolling through and I can't find her. I'm sure she was on earlier. She's there. I see her in the list, but she's muted. Mary Ellen, I found you. Oh, good. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think my husband wants one of those mute buttons. <laughs> 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 uh, so good evening, everyone. And um, thanks, uh, Charlene, for doing a fine job of giving us an overview on the uh, senior member program for IEEE. Um, now, if you are um, preparing an application for yourself or someone else, it's important that you spell these things out very clearly for the reviewers. Um, we don't want to have the reviewer pouring through your CV or resume to try to figure out if you're qualified. The best approach is to state it, how you're qualified, give the dates, give the number of years, and make it very easy for them to see why you're qualified. So um, you need 10 years of experience overall. You can count some of your um, educational time towards that 10 years. Um, the, and it doesn't matter how many years it took you to get your uh, bachelor's degree, you can count it at, at most of three years. Same thing with the master's four years or the doctorate five years total. You don't um, it's not cumulative. In other words, take your highest degree, that's the number of years that you can uh, count towards experience um, as, as your um, uh, educational part of, of the 10 years. Then is work experience. Um, you need to work five or more years. Um, the total needs to be 10 years, or you can just use 10 years of work experience. That's okay too. There are different ways that you can come up with this combination, but spell it out uh, for the reviewer so they understand which way you did it. So if we had someone who goes full-time to school um, and they also work full-time, you can't count that both ways. You have to count it one way or the other and you spell that out so the reviewer knows how you'd like it to be counted and then that, that makes the review process much easier and quicker. Next slide, please. Those 10 years do not have, you do not have to have been an IEEE member during those 10 years. You can, uh, someone can join IEEE and if they have the 10 years of experience, five of which was significant, they can apply for senior membership and can be approved very quickly if, uh, if it's the right uh, evidence is provided. So, there are several things. Uh, the five years of significant uh, performance is where these sometimes get hung up because people may not understand uh, what the significance of your work. So um, be very explicit about the impact of your work, not just that you worked at XYZ company and you did this job. 
what was the impact of that job to the customers, to the world, to the healthcare system, to whatever. You need to give the uh, description of that imp impact. Um, it, you could have been the lead on a particular part of a product. You could have been, but anything like that you can put in as far as uh, leading or, um, you know, breakthrough research, teaching, anything like that. Use some good adjectives if they apply. Um, so, that, again, it makes it easy for the reviewer to see this is significant work this person was uh, doing. Next slide, please. So we also uh, uh, recommend, I'll just summarize by saying, put the actual years, I did this for six years, put the actual years in parentheses next to it, and then say it was significant because, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to write a book, but whatever you do, please don't copy your resume or CV and drop it in where those two paragraphs go because that really causes a lot of inconvenience for the reviewer. And again, we want to make their job easy. It's clear to them that you you are qualified or the individual is qualified so they could quickly approve it and move on. They get hundreds of these that they review at a time. And so we want to make sure they don't make a mistake on your application. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Ellen. Now for the live demo, Charles Lord was supposed to call in tonight. He was not gonna be here at eight. Uh, but he should have been here by now. Charles, are you on the call? No, I'm just sitting in the back room. <laughs> oh, great. So what I'm going to do, Charles, I need to find you then. I'm at the top. I'm the other MGA SSC You're the other that doesn't have the ball. You got the ball. Uh -oh. Okay. All right. So let's share screen one. Okay, you should see the MGA OU analytics page. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, I uh, wanted to give you a little bit of live demo here, which uh, it's, you've got to be crazy enough to do it. Uh, I'm going to be showing you some example screens as we go through this. Uh, uh, the senior member page, well, actually the OU Analytics, because I want to go through how you find people uh, very quickly here. Um, and it's been running very, very slow today. And rather than you sitting there looking at a little uh, circle going around and around, I uh, hope to go through this fairly quickly. Uh, so where do we find our candidates? Uh, so I'm going to go through that really quickly. And also, we need to talk about where we're going to get our references from. Now, Charlene is working at getting some region-wide uh, folks. But if we're going to be doing 250 um, nominations, well, another 150, I think we're coming close if we get all these ones at the next time successful will be only 150 short um, with at least two references that 300 references that uh, we need a lot of people to be references here we don't want to have anybody to have to try to do 25 references uh, because it does take a little bit of time to go through and do the report of what you feel is the attributes of this particular candidate for getting through there so if you go to IEEE.org slash SAMI, S-I-M-I-E-E, -E, which is a shortcut to get to this page right here, and if you click on the big uh, purple link on here, Access OU Analytics, which jumps you to this page right here. Uh, it's the magic of presentations here. Uh, quickly, uh, to find the uh, candidates for uh, within your section, you click on the membership, societies, et cetera, in the lower left-hand corner. And that throws you into this next page on here, um, which gives you a lot of potential details in here. And what we're going to do is we look at this on the left uh, of the drop downs across the top of this, and we are in the product dashboard, the first tab of this. Uh, 
it does help, although it's not necessary, and I'll show you why in a moment. I'll just like the OU that you are representing. Now, for those of you who are section chairs, membership development, to secretaries, et cetera, if you click on this drop down, it'll probably only show your section. Now, I happen to have hats or roles you know, at three different levels here. I'm working with Region 3, of course, here with the Section Support Committee. I am a North Carolina Council Chair, and I'm also a member of the XCOM for the Western North Carolina section. So I'm going to Un uh, uncheck all and check Western North Carolina as my section, and I will click on apply. Now, if I do that, it's going to sit there and start doing the circles again. So just pretend that I clicked apply on that. I'll show you what happens in another moment there. For product type, Memberships covers everything, including societies. We want just IEEE membership. So what we're going to do is unclick general memberships and click only on IEEE memberships. Again, we need to click on the apply down here. That helps us uh, to actually focus in on what's going on within your section. And so if we go to my next screen here, uh, we've already done that to, well, actually it did, hold on. Like I said, live demos are always fun. Uh, this thing wants to time out on me. So I'm going to go through and actually do this in real time. So let's keep our fingers crossed. We applied that and the little round circles going around. And then we're going to click on product type here. That is IEEE membership, supply that. Now we've come down to what is in my section, and it just happens to be what's in Region 3, and it's showing 255 in there. Now, we also need to tie that down. We know that 255, that's the members of my, the people who are in my section. I'm in a small section here. And so we're going to bring up detail over there by highlighting it. We go over to the Detail tab, and hopefully this is going to go quickly. I had it preset and then it timed out on me. I apologize for that. And here we go with details. So these are all the people. And you notice here that we have some people who are in Central Arcana, Eastern Arcana, et cetera. OU Analytics, uh, when it groups people for your section, is people who either work there or live there or both. Uh, so you may have people, who, particularly students, who are in other sections. You may actually have uh, people who are in other regions. Notice that I did not have any other regions show up uh, in this. But if I click on Western Arcana section and highlight it, and again, the little circle is going to go around in here. Notice that Western Arcana is now highlighted. So now I'm looking at people who are actually members of my section. Don't just live here, but they're also members of my section, are considered part of my section, um, as well as living in there. So once we have that, we can go over to, um, let's see here. <clears throat> There's two other things I need to check on. Up here at the top, we have grade. Now, to be a senior member, you have to be either a member or associate member. And I'm going to unclick all here. So associate members are eligible, and members are eligible. Actually, life members are eligible. We you, it's optional if you click on that. We do not have a lot of people who have reached life member that are at that time interested in uh, becoming a senior member, but if I was to uh, dig through that, I probably would click on that. So we're going to click on apply to that also. And then we come over as a little circle goes around and around. And <laughs> I, again, I'm going to do a screenshot if I ever do this again. And we want to click on years of service, which is. Uh, two levels over here. Now you notice that they have everything as far as someone who has one year of, of service or membership all the way up to 43 is as far as they go. Um, well, we said that someone needs 10 years of professional development and that three of those years can count if you have a bachelor's degree, four years if you, uh, if you have a master's, and then five for a doctorate. Um, so we're going to just do a shortcut here. Oops, I want to check all, but I want to uncheck one through six. So now anyone with seven years or more of service is going to pop up here. And again, service is membership, that's not uh, volunteer uh, stuff. So we're going to click on that. So it's going to take my section 
everyone who is either a member or an associate member and they have at least uh, seven years of membership in IEEE at that current level. Now that's how, how long you've been in that grade. Uh, it does not count the years that you may have been a student member or you know some other type of like an affiliate. So now that we've put all of that in there and we have this data is now filtered down to just those particular values, we go up in the upper right hand corner and there is a download and we can click on download and you see it pops up here in the middle and it says download data. And downloading data will actually allow you to do a, a comma uh, separated values, it comes down, and now we have, and you should see now a spreadsheet. And very quickly here, here are the people that are in my section uh, that are either member or associate member that have that in there. So now I can start picking some of those people. Um, in the past, what I've, I traditionally do, and there's different ways of approaching this, is that I would take and do a mailing from these names. Uh, but before I do a mailing, and let's not get into trouble with the GDPR, is that we want to look at the tabs over here. You see there's OK for local activities, OK to contact. I typically will only mail to people for both of those. The one on the left is for people to be invited to an event. Now, of course, if we're calling this a senior member roundup, then that works in there. But we can come in and send this email out. But right now, I'm going to say that I have found some people on here that I want to personally nominate. So I'm going to go in there and pick out, say, my five people. So now we need to go back to our web browser and go to the URL that Shirley just put up there. This tells, takes us to the senior member elevation on there. And so the middle tab at the bottom of that is to somebody unmuted here. To review and complete, and we're going to click on the application. And of course, it's going to ask me again to we're almost there, folks. We're almost there, folks. <laughs> if you would mute your tablet, <laughs> or at least mute your microphone, I'm sorry. Okay, so now we can go in here and it shows you how many of your nominations have been. Can somebody please mute her? Um, okay, so it says who your current nominations are and also reference requests. I love listening to myself. So now we're going to go and we're going to pick up some member numbers. Hold on, folks. Okay, hopefully that's been muted. Nope. All right, so I'm going to pick up a member number. Again, that same. Hold on. I think I've been since I'm now. If I bear with me for a moment. Okay. okay. Well, Mark, whoever is still host, if you would go and mute everybody except me. Okay, thank you. That's been done. Okay, now, without hearing me echo through here, um, now I pick up the member number. That's the other important piece of information we needed from that spreadsheet that I just showed you. And so we're going to pick up the member number of my first person on here. And I should be able to now cut and paste doesn't always work here. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to pick up to a cut uh, to a copy. So I'm going to paste in a member number. And it says, OK, it's valid. So I can click on Go. And it's going to pick up this person. And hopefully it's Teresa Matthews, because otherwise, 
No, it's Alan Wyndham. Okay, I didn't put these in order. Um, that's fine. So in here, so it's going to ask, am I nominating? So I can go back and look at my spreadsheet, make sure that's the right person that I was going to put in there. So I'm going to say, am I nominating this person? I say yes, because I have uh, contacted this person. I've said, I'd like to nominate you for uh, senior membership. I have gotten their CV from them. Uh, in most cases, I will have talked with them. Uh, we actually do this in person nowadays. We're doing this, uh, of course, over the, the web about gathering the information in a way that's easy to review, like Marilyn just went over. And make sure that they are pointing out those significant things. If you just worked in a cubicle and didn't really do anything for the last seven years except, punch, you know, do something and punch a clock, did not have anything that, you know, that you were uh, recognized for, et cetera, then, you know, it can be difficult. But if you go in there and say, you know, I, I had three patents over the last five years and I, I was, uh, uh, was moved up from a engineer to a senior engineer and led a project or the other things that they've done in here. So I'm going to say this person, I now know that he happens to be um, a good person who fits in with this. So I'm going to say, yes, I want to nominate. And of course, you have to sit there and wait for the little circle to dance around for a moment here. But once we get this in here, then now this person is in the queue. They are in the system out there. And so first off, it goes through and gives you their information, says that this person is in my section in here, that I am the nominator. So I'm going to go in and say, uh, what type of entity um, am I representing in here? Because I am a part of the XCOM for West North Carolina section. I'm part of the consultants network. I'm a I'm member of the young professionals, et cetera, in here. But I'm going to say it's from the section. So it's going to be credited back to the section. And so now we have to answer, is this person now eligible of this nomination. They do not have to be um, eligible. And in fact, if, if uh, excuse me, aware, and if they're not aware, then they can't add things in here. But it does help for them to be aware unless you happen to somehow know enough about them to be able to not only uh, give the information about them uh, in your nomination form, but also to be able to pass it along to the other two references that have to, to come in here. And so you come in here, so uh, right now I did not talk to him today, so I'm going to say no for this. I'm going to, just so he doesn't get an email, and I put in here, I make sure that he's got his uh, degree. He actually has an advanced degree in here, so he is very eligible in here. Um, and so we put in here as far as the, the schools that he attended, uh, current presentation, he's now working for Eaton. Uh, all this is information that that this person has entered when they renewed their membership with the actual league. So this may not necessarily be exactly correct, and that's something that we have to fill in in there. And so we do put in, uh, make sure that we have the date that they started school. That is not part of the information in there. So again, this is something you need to collect from them. And so you need to know that you need this information. Uh, you need to know the years of experience that they were at that place. Uh, also set about the area that they work in within IEEE, if they're an engineer, if they're a uh, mathematician, et cetera, um, and stuff. And so I do know he's an engineer. And so once I have filled in these others, I go through the next in here, and we go through each of these steps. Um, a quick question uh, back to Charlene. Uh, is how far, we're running a little bit over time. How far do we want to go through this? Go through just the, the submit, and then the, the they will they will uh, fill the, the applicant will go in and fill their application. So we may may just need to click the one the part that says yes instead of no, and then show it to the person so that it's easier for them to when they're nominating their person they submit and send the link to the, inform their applicants to 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 complete the application and submit. Okay. Uh, we go through here as far as the professional experience, and again, this is not cut and paste from the CV. We put in here um, the uh, 
various elements of this. You can attach it in the attachments in here. Um, but put it, this is where you talk about the years that you've been in, in, in professional uh, experience and stuff. So again, I'm going to put in a um, Uh, it's actually senior. So not a lot of detail is in this because what's needed as far as this next tab on here as to what's significant about what was done. And it doesn't hurt to put more information to put in here. Um, so here's where the significant things come in. And this is where you need to show those five years that something has occurred. Um, so I'll put in here over last. And I'm abbreviating things because we want to go through this quickly. Over eight, last eight years, received five Patents. It does help that you put in the, the dates in here. And she actually is looking at, um, for the patents, I would actually put in the, uh, the dates. Um, I'm not going to fill that in right now, but it's essentially to be the dates of the five patents in there, uh, instead of uh, five development projects. And then I put in here the dates in here, so it was like uh, 2001 to 2012, et cetera. And so I put in there the dates for each one of those. And so for each, each of these things, again, you list these things that have happened over these five years, and it doesn't have to be the last five years. Uh, if this person was at, at this company for 14 years, it may have been 10 years ago to uh, five years ago during that five years that there's really significant stuff going on there. And it does not have to be contiguous. See, uh, I know when I did my application, I had some gaps in there between the really major things that I had done, the patents I'd received, the projects that I worked on, being a principal investigator on such and such and whatever. But you add these up to where all of these together give you a cumulative total of at least five years of significant things that have happened. You know, you don't have to have a patent to do this, but you should have led a team or you should have done project development or done, you know, publish something or done some sort of thing other than, like I say, sitting in a cubicle. We don't want to be Dilbert uh, doing this. Uh, we want to be someone who has actually accomplished some sort of thing in there that's going to show that we have had significant performance uh, that's going to be in there. So we go through, and I'm going to uh, pretend that I have filled out all of these things to show that there's much more than five years uh, for this particular person. Now we can put in here the different types of attachments. So this is where you can throw in such things as your CV or resume. So if I want to put in a copy of his CV, which always helps, uh, so that if someone uh, that's doing the review has any questions about what I just put in this previous page, or they were cryptic like I was being in there, you know, saying, okay, we did this and did that. That way they can say, well, you know, what does this mean? Okay, you did, you know, this project for five years, but you didn't really explain it, and I'd like to know more about it. Then you can go to the CV and say, oh, this person uh, had a revolutionary new design for a low voltage. Uh, high current power controller, you know, that received uh, three patents and is, uh, is currently a major product for this company, et cetera. And that's where they can go back and get that detail. So it does help to put this in there. So, you know, I can click on this, say, okay, I want to do that. I can choose the file from my directory and upload it. I don't have it right here in front of me. And so we go for that. So now we need to go next to references. And so again, we look at people who are in our pool to whom we can provide this person's information. And again, that is what I just typed in from what their professional experience is, what their significant uh, performance items are. So this, the 
uh, references can, if they don't know this person, didn't work with them, can vouch for what's happening there, and they can talk and you know and not parrot what you just wrote. There should be something in their own words, and of course they should also have a copy of this person's CV. Now remember the reference does need number one, of course, to be willing to do this, and they need to be either a senior member, senior life member, or a fellow or life fellow. Uh, those are the four grades that are. Uh, appropriate to be a reference for this person. Again, you only need two references um, for this if they're not going to, um, if you have done the uh, nomination with all of the information I put in here. So at this time, I would go through and I would type in uh, someone's member number, and that I don't have right in front of me uh, for some people that are in my senior member pool. So we'd add those numbers in there. And remember, these are people who hope are already knowing us about this person or you know have at least being willing to be part of the pool so that you can put them in there and say okay i have assigned this candidate to you uh for you to do a reference and that you would eat, have already sent them this detail about them the cv and the other uh significant performance items or you would do it right after putting these in here so it'd be very quick to go through here to do a step-by-step -step. once you have contacted these people you've gotten their um their answers to these questions about what they did, when they did it, uh, when they were in school, because typically it's not always on the CV. Typically the CV or what they turn in to the actual police says, I graduated from you know, NC State University in you know, 1977 with a bachelor's degree. I graduated from such and such uh, with a master's, uh, but it doesn't say when you started, and that's what they're looking for. Um, I doubt that someone's going to have a bachelor's degree that they got in less than three years, but they want to show that you were at least in school for at least three years to get that bachelor's degree and a total of four years for a master's, a total of five years for the doctorate. Um, uh, someone who can do it five years, more power to you. So we type in the member number. We don't need any other information on these people who are our references. That's just what we put into the pool. We type in those member numbers, uh, click the plus on here. And once you've gone through that, we actually have the package. This is what actually gets forwarded into the system. And so for each of the references to go in, they go back to the original page uh, that we had on there, which let's see if I can get back to that quickly. All right, let's jump back down here. Now, I have one nomination. I do not have any reference requests. But if, say, I put in uh, Charlene and Mary Ellen and Phil Marshall in, at, well, just two, it, it doesn't hurt to put more than two references in there because sometimes references don't always respond. So say I put all three of those. Any one of those three people logs into this page they look under my reference request on this page, and they're going to see Alan Wyndham on there. So that is, it automatically pops up for each one of the references. And so once they click on those references, then they can go through and fill in the same information about, you know, what did they do as far as significant information, uh, excuse me, significant uh, accomplishments and they don't have to know the details to say of when they started school, et cetera. But that's where they talk about what this person did that makes them an ideal candidate for a senior member. So it helps for that reference person to be very familiar with not only the basics of the CV, but what the major accomplishments this person had that's a significant experience. <laughs> Any questions on this part of the process? This is Bill, are you about to wrap things up here? Yes, I'm I'm ready to pass it back. Just to, just to summarize and to say that, um, thank you, Charles. Thank you, Mary, for the presentation. Um, we would like to encourage all section chairs to go through this process within your section. 
as as Charles had outlined, Charles has outlined the process in how to select and how to identify your eligible members. So we're gonna ask each section, if you're a section chair on this call, to do at least one of this workshop within this year to in order for us to meet to meet our 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 target, our goal. To, to reach our 250. So we're gonna ask you to do one workshop within within your section and you the next the the workshop it, the panel review that's coming up after this after June is August. So you you want to plan your workshop so you can you can go through this process, identify and the 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 flip side to what Charles did, you don't have to go through that whole process. You could you could you could select yes at the top where you want the, the nominee to be able to go, to go in and fill the application so that your life will be easier you just nominate and the applicant will go in and fill the information they go in log in and fill their information and the references will automatically get an email to, to do to also go in and do the reference fill the reference information so it's it's been an easy process and we're asking you to just help us to work together so we can meet our target for 2020. so thank you very much for I don't know if Bill has anything to add or anyone else or any other question. Thank you all. And uh, hopefully you see Charlene's email address up there. If you have any questions, contact her. All right, thank you everyone for your time tonight. I um, hope you found this uh, useful. The slides, both sets of slides will be available and we will hopefully within about a week have uh, these, um, the recordings of the session available for you to download or to stream live on a YouTube channel. So take care, everyone, and hope to see uh, some of you tomorrow evening at the YP Professional Development event and uh, next Wednesday for the next in this series on um, ideas for new events. Take care and have a good night. Thank you, everyone.